Don't you think it would be awesome to remember every single thing? To never, ever be able to forget anything? Well, you're wrong. And by the time I finish my story, you'll understand why. Somehow I was born with the extraordinary ability to remember everything I could talk about before. I was a one-year-old, and at first everyone was obsessed with me. My parents posted to everyone who would listen, and my two older sisters, Monique and Maribel, were always telling their friends about their awesome sister Maddie. Many kids started talking early. There's probably nothing special about her, my grandmother said. My grandmother said to my mom one evening, this was apparently enough to convince her that I was ordinary. Then a burglar broke into our house. My sisters were at school, my dad was at work, and my mom was in the shower. I was in my crib, poking the eyes of my favorite stuffed toy, when I saw a tall man dressed in black towering over me. I didn't scream. I just pretended to be a dumb baby. He picked up his phone, and I heard him say, Yes, I'll be returning home when I'm done. Yes. 24 Park Lane, 5th floor, 2nd door. I'll have a big stash for us to sell soon. He made a goofy face at me, then went downstairs. I heard a few noises, and then the door slammed shut. My mom ran out of the shower when she heard the door and came straight to my room. Maddie, are you okay? I just heard the door. I wasn't expecting your father until later today. It wasn't dad. It was a man dressed in black. He made a funny face at me. Mom ran downstairs and screamed. Her television set was gone. She searched her room and all her jewelry was gone too. He had also stolen father's safe. She called the police who immediately came to our house. Tell them what he looked like, Maddie. He was tall, had blonde hair, black eyes, and a tattoo of a rabbit on his left cheek. She's just a toddler. She can't possibly remember that. This can't be accurate, one of the policemen said. No, wait. That sounds like the description of the serial burglar. We've been after. She mentioned the tattoo, another officer replied. I have his address, too. He told someone on the phone he was going to 24 Park Lane, fifth floor, second door. I said, my mom's eyes opened wide. You heard all that, sweetie? I guess it's worth a try. Let's see if we can catch this guy, a third policeman said. They left the house, and my mom gave me a long hug and told me that she would never leave me alone again when she went to the shower. In about 30 minutes, there were news reporters at our house. They wanted to interview the parents of the toddler who helped them catch the worst burglars in our town. My parents were flattered and were very happy that they could begin boasting about me again. It was confirmed that I was not normal. Two years later, I started preschool, but it was pretty boring because I knew everything they were teaching the other kids. Sometimes when the teachers needed a break, they'd ask me to teach and go to sleep. I know it sounds really funny, but this really happened. A year later in kindergarten, my new teacher told my parents I could skip to the sixth grade, but they decided that it might not be the best decision. Besides, what sixth grader would want to have a five-year-old friend? I'd be too lonely. I'd made a friend named Stephanie, and although I was way smarter than she was, we played together like normal kids. She had a fantastic dollhouse, and we would play with it for hours. As I continued growing, my sisters Monique and Mary Bell began struggling in school. I saw Monique crying one night over a bowl of popcorn while staring at the blank television screen. What's wrong, Monique? I asked. I got a zero on my social studies quiz again. How come? You studied so hard the other night. Well, I don't remember anything the next day. The teacher says if I don't pass the next one, I won't be able to go on the field trip with everyone else. She's so... I mean... She handed me the multiple choice quiz, and I instantly knew all the correct answers although she was a few grades above me. But this is so easy, Monique. Here. I shaded the correct answers for you. 
Maybe the same questions will come on the next quiz. My sister smiled, but I could have sworn I saw her scorn as I left the room. The next week, she refused to speak to me, so I asked Maribel if something was wrong. She was really upset when you showed her the correct answers on her quiz. She thinks that you were showing off that you're a genius. Me? A genius? Of course. You get straight A's. Many people are jealous of you. They just don't say it. Heck, I'm jealous of you too sometimes. But I know it's not your fault. Let's just hope that money comes around. Years later, Monique was still barely speaking to me. But I was still friends with Stephanie. We ended up in all the same classes through elementary and middle school. Now we were going to the same high school, but it wasn't the same. She became very distracted by boys. She couldn't think straight about them, and she was obsessed with the idea of finding a boyfriend. She stopped studying, doing homework, or anything related to school. Steph, what are you doing with your life? You can't spend all your time obsessing over these guys. You've got to find a balance. I told her one day. She wasn't too happy about that and stopped talking to me for about a week. Then, on the morning of her biology test, she sent me a note that read, Hey, can you pass me the answers? I didn't have any time to study. Just show me while the teacher's head is turned away. I gave her the answers that time because it had been a very lonely week, and I had no one else to talk to. We both got 100% for that test, and she was very happy. We started hanging out again. But do you know what she did next? She tried to make it a habit. She constantly asked me for the test quiz answers, and sometimes she even expects me to do her homework. I did for a while, but eventually I told her I couldn't do it anymore. I hated being a dishonest person, and giving her the answers wasn't really helping her. She didn't see it that way, and she made school a total nightmare for me. As I was walking through the hallway one morning, Kevin from my math class said, Wow, Maddie. I didn't know you were capable of doing something so horrible. What do you mean? I asked. You stole Stephanie's boyfriend? Isn't she your best friend? What? Did she say that? She caught you two kissing in the computer lab yesterday. That's ridiculous. She did not. But he was gone before I could finish. That day, everyone was pointing fingers at me and calling me a boy snatcher. The next week, there was a new rumor. Stephanie had told everyone I still had $100 from her purse, which was also ridiculous because she never had that much money. She continued spreading rumors, and after a month, no one would talk to me. I was really sad, and I even considered asking my parents to just let me write the college entrance exam so I could leave high school. Monique still wasn't talking to me, so I decided to talk to Mary Bell about my situation over breakfast. Maybe something is wrong with her? Have you tried talking to her? She stopped talking to me completely. Then started spreading these rumors. I sort of want to throw a bucket of pain in her face. But I also miss my friend. She's been my best friend since kindergarten. Well, maybe you should try to talk to her and find out exactly what's wrong. Then you can decide whether to end the friendship for good or try to make it work. I took my sister's advice and walked over to Stephanie's house. That night, when I got there, all of her lights were on and I could see her standing in her living room. It took me a while to notice the woman standing next to the window, staring inside. I watched closer to the door and rang the bell while looking at her strangely. As soon as she noticed me, she ran away. Oh, what do you want? Stephanie said as she opened the door. Um, someone was just standing here looking through your window. Yes, you freak. Why are you in my house? I just want to talk. I don't understand how we were best friends and now we're like enemies. I don't understand what I did wrong and why you're treating me like this. It's because you're a nerd and a loser. You think you're better than everyone because you've got a perfect memory. Well, that's all you have. You're not beautiful, 
and you'll never get as many voices as me. Good luck making anything out of yourself just for being smart. I'm sure your perfect memory will pay off someday. Now go away. I've got better things to do. She then slammed the door in my face. I cried all the way home, and when I got there, I was just playing angry because my mood changed as soon as I walked into the living room. Whoa, look at this, Maddie. Marybelle said. She was watching the news. A reporter was just explaining that a female prisoner had escaped and that she was very dangerous. Her picture showed up on the screen, and I gasped. It was the same woman who was looking through Stephanie's window. Oh my God, I said. What? Marybelle replied. Nothing, nothing at all. I smiled and thought, this should be exciting. I could call the police and try to protect Stephanie, but she was so mean to me, so why should I care? Instead, I decided to find out all I could about this woman and why she decided to show up at Stephanie's house. The next week, I searched online, went to the library, and even to the police station to see if I could get her records. I tried my luck, and eventually my hard work paid off. Her name was Kathy Young. She had been arrested for gang-related activities. But the most interesting part of her story was that before she had been arrested, she had given birth to a baby girl. I began to connect the dots. Stephanie looked nothing like her siblings or parents, but a whole lot like Kathy. I had to find out if my suspicions were correct. I found out more about Kathy, and it reached a point where I could identify people who were a part of it. I looked for them around town. I memorized their facial features and what they did with their entire day. Then I approached one of them one day. His name was Carl, and he worked at a nearby 7-Eleven. I need to talk to Kathy, I said. What are you talking about? I know you know where she is hiding. Listen, I'm not a cop or anything. It's about her daughter. Please trust me, I'm not dangerous. He hesitated for a few minutes and finally said, Okay. Come back here around 7. I'll take you there at night. He was waiting for me outside. A black car pulled up and I got inside. They drove a few blocks until we came to a house that wasn't the least bit suspicious. Kathy was waiting for us inside, looking very confused. You were the girl I saw the other night. Yes, listen. I have something important to ask you about that girl you were looking at through the window. Is she your daughter? Yes, that's Amber. How do you know? Who are you? Well, our new parents named her Stephanie. We used to be friends. What a stupid name. Why are you here? I'm not sure. Can you help me with that? I want her back. I'm finally out of prison, and I've got to continue hiding because they're looking for me. I can fly safely to another country because I've got connections, but I don't want to leave without my daughter. Now, you're probably thinking that Stephanie, who really believed that the people she lived with were her biological parents, would hate flying away with a woman who was just a stranger. We were best friends, and I knew that she'd hate that, but I felt like I hit the jackpot. After she was so mean to me, she deserved to be kidnapped by a stranger, and maybe if she was gone the people at my school would stop being so mean to me. So I did it. I gave them Stephanie's entire schedule and a list of every single place she could possibly be after school and on weekends. Like she said, my perfect memory was going to pay off. It was about to ruin her life. By the next week, it was all over the news. Stephanie had vanished. There was absolutely no trace of her. Maybe I will hear from her again when we're much older. I don't really care at this point. I think she deserved it. I do feel sorry for her adoptive parents. But they'll get over it, I'm sure. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. I could hardly contain my excitement as I waited outside the school for my mom to pick me up. 
My friends were all excited for me too. I can't believe you're finally going to see your mom. I know, she's only been away a year, but it seems like forever. I know, right? I'm so happy. I really missed her. Yeah, I know you've spoken to her every day, but it's not the same as having your mom there, is it? I can't imagine how I'd feel if my mom had to go away for a year. Anyway, she's back now in a few minutes. You'll get to see her. I looked down the road trying to see if I could see her car coming. My stomach had butterflies. And my heart was beating like mad. Come on, Mom, hurry up. Suddenly, this random woman walked up to me, put her arms around me, and gave me a big hug. Hello, darling. Uh, who are you? What do you mean? Who am I? I'm your mom. My mouth fell open in shock. It was definitely my mom's voice. I would recognize that anywhere. But this woman looked nothing like my mom. I could hear my friends snickering and whispering to each other. God, she looks crazy. Have you seen how much plastic surgery she's had? I know, she looks so fake. Why would she do that to herself? She looks so weird. My friends were right. My mom was unrecognizable. I was so embarrassed. I couldn't believe that she would have had all this work done to herself. But before I go on, make sure you like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to make sure you don't end up with a psycho mom like mine. I just wanted to get out of there as quickly as possible. So I pushed my mom into the car and jumped in beside her. I tried to block out the sounds of my friends and everyone else laughing, but it was impossible. As soon as we pulled away from the school gates, I started laying into my mom. What have you done to yourself? What do you mean? Are you serious? You've completely changed your appearance. I didn't even know you were my mom. Oh, don't be so dramatic, Marcia. Sure, I've had a bit of work done, but I'm only trying to maintain my looks. You've got to be joking. Have you looked in the mirror? You're over-exaggerating. No, I'm not. All my friends could tell what you've done. Oh, God, it's so embarrassing. I just don't understand why you would want to do it. Because I want to look young. No one wants to look old and wrinkly, do they? But you've gone too far. Sure, an odd facial here and there and some good face cream, that's normal. But what you've done is far from normal. Well, I think I look good. We drove the rest of the way home in complete silence. So much for the happy reunion I was looking forward to. As soon as we got home, I ran into the house, pushing past my dad on the way, and stormed up to my room. Marcia, what's the matter? What's going on? I tried to ignore my dad, but he wouldn't let it go. Come on, Marcia. Come back down and talk about whatever it is that's bothering you. I went back down the stairs and told my dad what I was angry about. It's her. Who? Mom. Why? What's wrong with mom? Have you two had a fight? Just look at her. Don't tell me you haven't noticed what she's done to herself. I think she looks great. You're kidding me, aren't you? It's like she went abroad and came back a different person. No, I'm serious. I don't think your mom has ever looked better. I couldn't believe that my dad was happy with the way she looked. You're probably just happy because she's got big boobs. Now, after those final words, I stormed back up to my room, slamming the door behind me. I laid on my bed and started ranting to myself. I was so mad with my mom. I started shaking with anger. How am I going to face anyone at school? I'm going to be the laughing stock. Oh, God, my life couldn't be any worse right now. The first day back at school was awful. Every time I walked into a room, 
Everybody suddenly stopped talking and just stared at me. I knew they were whispering about my mom. Of course, my friends didn't say anything. They tried to reassure me. But I knew they were lying. She doesn't look that bad, Marsha. You know, everyone will soon get used to it and find something else to gossip about. But I knew the only way to get them to stop talking and laughing about my mom was to keep her out of sight. So from that moment on, I made sure never to let my friends see me with my mom. I could tell that she was a bit upset not spending time with me, but it was her own fault. I told her I didn't want her picking me up from school anymore. But why not, Marcia? We have so much time to make up for. I like walking home with my friends. Oh, okay, then if you're sure. I am. Whenever she asked me to go out to dinner with her or to the shops, I always came up with some excuse or another. Oh, sorry, I've got plans. Or I have so much homework to catch up on. You and Dad just go. And my friends were right after a while. People did stop talking about my mom and found other stuff to gossip about. My life went back to normal, and I tried to forget about what my mom had done to herself. But then one night, things blew up again. We were sitting having dinner together when mom started about doing some more surgery. I'm thinking about getting a rib removed. It will make me way smaller. I shook my head when I heard what she said. You can't do that. That's crazy. No, it isn't. All the celebrities get it done. And look how good they look. You are insane. I was so angry. I jumped up, knocking my chair to the floor, and at the same time, spilling a glass of water all over the table. That's enough. Now you're going too far. I'm not going to let you do this to yourself. What do you mean? You're not going to let me? I can do whatever I want. You can't do this. It's the most stupid idea I've ever heard. Marcia, I am having the surgery done, whether you like it or not. You make me so mad. I can't talk to you about this anymore. I stormed out of the room and upstairs to my bedroom. As I lay on my bed, I couldn't stop thinking about what my mom was planning to do. I have to find a way to get her to stop doing all these crazy things to herself. Suddenly, it was like a light bulb had gone off in my head. I knew what I had to do. I decided I would devise a plan to trick my mom into not doing any more crazy surgeries or injecting anything into herself. I started searching through the internet and finally found what I was looking for. It was an advert for a company that hired out actors for any role you wanted them to perform. I contacted them and organized for someone to play a fake doctor. Then I found an office space to hire for a day. Once it was all set up, I told my mom all about it. Mom, you know what? I owe you an apology. I apologize for trying to stop you from getting the surgery. I thought about it and you're right. It's your body and you can do what you want with it. I am so happy to hear you say that, Marcia. I don't like fighting with you all the time. Well, we're not going to fight anymore. In fact, I've even done some research, and I found the best doctor to perform your surgery. Wow, that's great. Thank you, darling. And that's not all. I've set up an appointment with him, and I'm going to come with you for it. Oh, darling, you made me so happy. My mom came over and gave me a hug. I'm happy you're going to come with me. When the morning of my mom's appointment arrived, we set off in her car for a short drive into town. His office was on the corner opposite the post office. Okay, we can park right outside. Then, as we pulled up, I saw that the company had put up a golden sign on the wall outside the building. Dr. Brown Specialist in All Plastic Surgeries. This is the place right here. We knocked on the door, and when it opened, a man was standing there wearing a white coat. Hello? Hello. You must be Marcia. 
And this is your mom. Yes, it is. Well, come on in then. Now, what can I do for you? Well, I want to get a rib removed to make my waist look smaller. Well, yes, of course. I can help you with that. But have you heard about the latest discovery in the field of plastic surgery? No, no, I haven't. What is it? The doctor told my mom all about this amazing new serum that would make you look 20 years younger than you were. That sounds like just what I need. Where can I get it? Oh, I can order it for you. But you will need to pay the cost up front, and it is very expensive. Oh, don't worry about the price. I will pay anything if it makes me look younger. Mom handed over a huge bunch of dollar bills, and the doctor told her to come back the same day the following week to have the treatment. When we left his office, Mom was so happy. I can't believe you've done this for me, Marcia. I can't wait for the next week to get the treatment. You're welcome, Mom. I just want you to be happy. The following week, when Mom went in for the treatment, she was so excited. How long will it take for me to see the results of the serum? Oh, it shouldn't take long. You'll probably wake up in the morning and not even recognize yourself in the mirror. Wow, that's quick. I can't wait to see the results. But what my mom saw when she looked in the mirror the next morning did not make her happy at all. The sound of my mom screaming woke me up from a deep sleep. Uh-huh. Ah, what's happened to my face? I jumped out of bed and ran towards the bathroom. What I saw when I got there made me gasp with shock. Mom, what happened? You look terrible. It must have been that serum. Oh my God, I'm going to kill that doctor. My mom's face and body was one big red rash and she had huge hives breaking out everywhere. I can't go out looking like this. What will people think of me? Maybe it'll calm down in a little while. Don't panic. I'm sure it's going to be fine. But it wasn't fine, and it didn't calm down. If anything, it started getting worse. I'm swelling up now, right? That's it. I'm going straight to the doctor's office, and I'm going to make him do something about it. Okay, Mom, I'll come with you. Thank you, Marcia. You're such a good girl. Mom and I drove straight to the doctor's office. But you wouldn't believe what we found when we got there. The whole place was empty. The sign had been taken off the building, and the doctor was nowhere to be seen. My mom gave a sigh of despair. Oh, Marcia, I've got a feeling we've been scammed. I think you might be right, Mom. I can't believe I fell for it. I mean, sure, I've heard all the horror stories of bad plastic surgeons, but I never thought it would happen to me. It's not your fault, Mom. He seems so genuine. While I've learned my lesson, as far as I'm concerned, all plastic surgeons are scammers. I'm not going to do anything else to my face or body. I think you've made the right decision, Mom. You don't want something like this happening to you again. I was so happy. Finally, my mom had come to her senses. She wasn't going to have any more crazy procedures done to herself. And I bet you're wondering what caused my mom's face and body to react so badly to the serum. Well, the serum was actually harmless. All it was was some coconut oil. The reason she had all the rashes and hives, it was because I had been secretly sprinkling selfish and seafood into all of her food while she wasn't looking. You see, my mom has a severe allergy to shellfish. I knew that if I gave her enough of it in the days leading up to her appointment, she would be sure to break out in a rash. I'm so happy. 
my plan worked. At least now, I won't have to be embarrassed by anything else my mom might do to herself. Hi, my name is Nicole, and I want to tell you a story about a horse girl. Actually, it's me. I think you've already noticed there's true drama and hope behind my appearance. Hope for the best. Anyway, you'll soon understand why a horse, because of the peculiar scaffold of the jaw and the matching teeth, because of a strange laugh like a neighbor of a mirror. Well, I won't laugh if you don't mind, because people are stupid. I'll start by saying that my appearance has always been my plague. When I went to school, I realized that I was very different from my peers, and from most human beings in general. I was given corresponding nicknames, and they called me a horse, a mayor, a main banger, and a centaur at different stages of my life. My parents kept trying hard to fix the problem of my jaw and teeth for a long time, but medicine was no use. The only thing they offered was plastic surgery, but it was a very serious intervention. My mother put an end to the question of my appearance. After another visit to the plastic surgeon, who said that the surgery could kill me and advised my mother to reflect on what is more important to her, the health or the beauty of her daughter. So I remained a horse girl. And sometimes it seemed to me that my life was a nightmare and there was no way out. Every day, I swear, every single day, I hear people mock me, insult me, and even curse me. Besides, children and teenagers are not the only ones who do it. Sometimes even adults, who seem to be decent people, say something mean about me. Probably you'll never understand why some people grew up, but their brains never did. Once, when I was a kid and believed in people, my classmates decided to pull a prank on me at that time. We were about 9 or 10 years old, and the jokes matched our age. So, a girl named Linda said that they had a stunning surprise for me and asked me to come with her. We approached a closed door to one of the classrooms, and then Linda asked if I was ready. I don't know what I expected to see there, but definitely something light and kind. So I happily said yes after she opened the door. Then... She and the other classmates pushed me inside. I heard a crowd of older children laughing out loud at me and calling me a horse right away. It turned out that the brother of one of my classmates studied there and said that he would ask his classmates a very difficult riddle to which no one would know the answer for sure. And then he would invite everyone to see the answer with their own eyes. I was supposed to appear at that moment. As you can imagine... They made a fool out of me and humiliated me in front of everybody. I had no more faith in people. From that moment on, I didn't even know that someone could do things like that and didn't understand why they did it. Did I do anything to them? Or was it my fault that I looked like a horse? Why did they do it to me? Anyway, the lesson was learned and I was never brought into stuff like that again. You know, I told you this story to give an example. In fact, something like this happens to me very, very often. I think if there was a hideaway hat, I would wear it all the time so that no one could see me or notice me. Moreover, I remember the new year, 2014, very well. Although it happened many years ago, I still remember that holiday as if it were yesterday. Do you know why? because we were celebrating the year of the horse long before December 31st. My classmates began to make fun of me, saying that this would be my year, and it would certainly become the best for me. Ha ha, very funny. They printed a calendar for the next year with my photo and hung it in the middle of the classroom. Someone drew a picture and placed it in the school hall, and there was an inscription with wishes and a drawing of a horse on my desk. But that wasn't all. Early in the morning, on December 31st, my mother took me to some kind of New Year celebration for children. And at the entrance, it turned out that all the children had come in costumes of some kind of animals. I was wearing a very beautiful dress that my mother and I had ordered, specially for me in the tailor shop. 
It was a bit awkward. But then a smart lady standing at the entrance said those magic words to my mother. Oh, she looks like a horse. She doesn't even need a costume. Come on in. You can't even imagine how we felt at that moment. No, we didn't get over it. We sued that woman because she had no right to say something like that. Well, she was surely wrong considering the fact that she was 60 and I was a nine-year-old girl. You know, I haven't expected anything much from life for a long time. I really haven't. What good does that do, friends? Well, who will become friends with a horse girl who loves that nonsense career? Well, I don't know the appropriate career for a horse girl, but my world turned upside down when a new girl named Lolita came to study in our class. She is extremely beautiful, slim, sociable, interesting, and among other things, she is engaged in theater. She will be an actress for sure. Of course everyone wanted to hang out with her, but not me. I wasn't good enough to even exist in the same world as her. The only thing I could do was show my inferiority and ugliness once again. Oh no, I better admire her awesomeness from the sidelines. But Lolita constantly invited me along with the rest of our classmates to come to her theater premieres, to visit her parties, and to hang out. I didn't believe the sincerity of her intentions and was sure that it was some kind of trick. Such a cool girl would never hang out with me. But once I gave in, I went to watch a theater production featuring her, and she turned out to be a very good actress. Her acting really impressed me, and I wished I were Lolita. I wanted to shine on stage like her. After the performance, Lolita offered to go to the cafe to have a meal, and I hesitantly agreed. I still didn't believe that someone like her could want to hang out with me, and I kept on waiting for a catch. We talked a lot in the cafe. Lolita... Lolita asked if I liked the performance and if I wanted to become an actress too. I laughed and said that it didn't matter what I wanted because it was impossible. Lolita said that I was wrong and offered me to participate in the performance playing a centaur. It hurt so much that I threw my money on the table and left right away. On the way home, I cried and I wanted to disappear, dissolve, and forget that I ever existed. Lolita turned out to be like everyone else. And I was such a fool for believing in a person. Again, I couldn't forgive myself for another stupid thing and severely scolded myself instead of Lolita. Meanwhile, she sent me a message and asked for forgiveness and offered to meet me, but I simply ignored her. It took a couple days to get over it, and then I realized something. In fact, Lolita didn't offer me anything offensive. Centaur? What's wrong with that? She plays witches, rats, and monkeys. But that is not considered humiliation. Maybe I should try. I agreed to meet with Lolita. She said that I got her wrong, and in fact she considered me very pretty and peculiar. She also added that my appearance was my highlight, and I should use it in my turn. I agreed to participate in the performance as a centaur. A month later, we had a premiere. I was shining on stage and received a lot of applause, as well as Lolita. The audience really liked my acting, and they even gave me flowers after the performance. After that, I began to feel more confident on stage, which helped me solve some personal issues. Now, the sky's the limit for me, and I prepare for the premiere of the play or I will no longer be a centaur. This time, I will play a monster. No, this doesn't offend me at all. On the contrary, I am glad to have such an opportunity to express myself. Centaur monster. The main thing is how I feel about myself, and how I feel about myself as a person. A girl. I feel that I deserve all the best.
Do you laugh at people with imperfect appearance? Do they seem wrong and disgusting to you? You can give your answer in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel in order not to miss a new interesting story tomorrow.